Hello there and welcome to the sixth episode of my Beagle Star build log. Last video was an intermezzo about spool holders, which aren't included in the kit, but I think they're pretty nifty and you should definitely make either these spool holders or something like that, because otherwise your spool will be rolling over the table, which is not nice. At the end of that video, I was referring to uh, maybe a little surprise I would have, but I will, I will uh, keep that for a later stadium because I'm still working on it and I don't need it at this moment. So that will have to wait. Uh, this video will be about the vertical integration. Uh, it's the uh, integration of the bottom vertex, the uh, uprights and the top vertex and the effector carriage assembly. So that's pretty exciting because we will finally see the printer take like real shape. So without any further delay, I would say let's get started. So for the vertical integration of the uh, Beagle printer, we need obviously the uprights. We need the lower vertex and the upper vertex. I have them prepared here. Uh, we need the uh, effector carriage. I've got it here. And we need some bits and pieces like uh, five times M4 lock nuts. I've got them here in this little tray. Uh, timing belt, I've got that here. Uh, tie wraps and the belt tensioners, which are these little nifty thingies, which look like they come from clothespins, but they're in place to keep the belt tensioned. Um, the first step is to prepare the rods, which actually uh, calls for some extra material, which is cellophane tape and electrical tape, ins insulation tape. It's not in the required material list, uh, and I actually wondered why it was that we needed this tape. Um, but on discussing it with the wrap up world guys, I discovered that it's actually because they're printing two accurate pieces. This printer was originally designed for uh, a printer that was not that accurate and the printing errors would uh, make sure that the bars were kept in place. Because they're printing so accurate now, the bars have a little bit of play when you insert them. So we need to fill the gap with a little bit of tape. So, so uh, let's start that. Um, manuals uh, calls for uh, cellophane tape 10 centimeters from the bottom all the way up to but not overlapping the hull. I cheated a little because I already marked the 7 centimeter sign uh, so I can just start wrapping the bars with tape and Okay, so cellophane tape is done. What we now need to do is with black insulation tape, uh, tape over the edges of the uh, uprights from just above the hole right up to here. So that's about six centimeters and that's on both sides of obviously. So, the end result should look like this. And that should be pretty much everything there is to preparing these bars. But you can always check for sharp edges. And it's always a good thing, actually, to do a little bit of wire insulation tape to the edges of these bars because there will be wires running through it and I'm not too comfortable with wires running against bare metal even if they're not moving at all that much but still it's good practice to, uh, to protect your wires so there we go and now 
we grab our little vertex and we try to pry the board in. Let's see. It's actually important that the steel bars go in all the way up to the bottom of the uh, of the corner piece, and then and only then we should tighten up these screws. So bars are already pretty tight now, but now we secure it in place by screwing this one completely in, and it should go into the pre-drilled hole of the upright and that will secure this bar completely in place and it will not move at all anymore yeah nice maybe you can see it let's see uh, yeah you can just see it the screw here i just tightened it goes right through the pre-drilled hole of this bar and it, it really locks locks the bar in place so it's pretty tight already by uh, uh, fastening the end cap screws but this one is just like this bar won't go anywhere any, uh, anymore and that's a good thing so now we repeat with the other two uh, with the other two uprights That's the upright. Uh, you can actually tighten, uh, tighten all these screws pretty, uh, pretty decently, but still don't overdo it. And they are running in uh, nuts, but I managed to strip the thread on one of the one of the nuts or the bolts. I'm not sure, but either way, it's spinning but not advancing. Mm, doesn't matter that much. The uprights are really, really sturdy and really tight now. So, so now we are going to slide over these carriage carriages, and there's a tip in the manual, and that's to do a cable tie or something like that, uh, 15 centimeters from the top of one of the uh, of one of the uprights to keep it in place so you don't have to like work with three hands at the same time so let's see i believe i do have some cable ties left some extra something like that now let's see so the carriages should be going over the bars like this the effector links should go up and the slots for the teeth and belt should go in. So like this. So there you go. We have three carriages held slightly sort of in place by this little tie wrap temporary tie wrap and it's moving pretty snug and pretty nice right now because I had to actually loosen the tensioner screws a little bit so I could slide them over uh, easily. We will adjust these later on actually. So what we're now going to do is attach the upper vertex, uh, this one to the uprights. Now if you're going to build this printer uh, just as it is then you can the upper vertex in about every position you can uh, you can imagine. In my case though I want this part where the extruder will uh, uh, attach to uh, on this upright. So I have to make sure I have it in the right way up, which is like this. And now we tighten the screws 
in the upper vertex and which go through the through the uprights and we will secure them with the M4 uh, lock nuts that we have prepared in our uh, little tray here. So let's do that. This looks actually pretty awesome. It's nice and sturdy. Uh, it's reason reasonably straight. Uh, actually, I checked it by eye and I think it's dead straight. There's a couple of things to mention. Um, first thing is, uh, it's also in, in the manual, but I also uh, it's just uh, really good to know. Uh, these bars uh, lean inward a little bit. Uh, so you have to uh, use a little bit of force to get them into the right holes. Uh, nothing too bad, just worth uh, worth mentioning. Uh, the other thing is, um, I had a little issue on this inward screw because the hole uh, in the corner piece didn't quite line up with the hole in the uh, in the upright. Don't be afraid to use a little bit of uh, physical labor here. Uh, it, in the end, it did fit. I just had to. Uh, pry and push a little bit, but nothing too bad. Uh, please do check uh, after this step if your frame is straight and true, because now is the time to fix any errors if, if, uh, if there's any problem. So now what we should do is take our timing belt and cut it in three equal pieces. So now we should have three pieces that are roughly the same length and we thread them, our vertices, in a way that the teeth go over the pulley here, over the pulley here and through here. Okay, so you might have seen me doing it already, but this is how it should look like. So the belt should go in, through, and then with a small loop back through all these zigzags up to there. It's pretty fiddly, it's a terrible job to do, but once, once it's in place, it won't go anywhere and that's obviously what we want. Okay, so now we have the belts threaded from the lower pulley with the teeth and the motor on it all the way up through this slot in the carriage then over the idler pulley into the carriage with a zigzag slot, then a small loop and back into it. It's pretty fiddly to get it in, but once it's in, it's pretty secure. I quite like it, uh, despite the hard time it gave me to uh, actually tighten everything. Now what we should do is uh, make loops on the side of the belt as well. Make sure that you have no twists in the belt whatsoever because twists will ruin your printing experience. So what we do is we make another loop and we need to keep another two six centimeter gap between the upper loop and the lower loop. So and then we grab a zip tie we fasten it. Actually the only thing this zip tie is doing is to keep the teeth of the belt locked together and that's what's actually picking up all the force. Now we should uh, attach the 
belt tensioners and unfortunately there's no picture of that in the manual so I have to see how that works. Yeah, there it is. So the belt should go through the tensioner over the spring and then back into the tensioner because if you start pulling the tensioner it stretches a little bit. So this is what's getting what's keeping your belt uh, tensioned. Now we grab another other zip tie and use that to secure the loops together. Before you tighten this this zip tie, please make sure that your belt doesn't have any twists at all. This looks pretty decent. But please double check because once again it will ruin your print uh, printing experience. Okay, so now the belts are in, they're all straight and true, and as the manual specifies, they can be strummed like a guitar string. Be prepared to um, use a little bit more tie wraps than are mentioned in the manual because I actually managed to destroy a couple of them while tensioning the belt. I had to use quite some force and I just pulled two or three apart. Also, make sure that when you tension, uh, tighten the belt, that the belt is still on the GT2 pulley because uh, it can slide off and then your tensioning is all wrong. So check that. And then you should uh, tighten all the grub screws on the GT2 pulleys on the motor. So I'm going to put this one on its side. Now the manual mentions one other thing that is to check the carriages for play and tighten these screws so that you just don't have any play anymore but don't over tighten them because uh, then it will run very heavy and it will in the end burn the motors. Actually I had to undo the screws uh, on mine so I just I will just tighten them so that nuts don't fall off but actually already pretty snug so <clears throat> I don't have to do much on, on this one. That feels pretty pretty good actually. And that's that's about it. So what I'll do is Cut off the excess belts because it makes the printer look that much, that bit nicer. This pretty much concludes the vertical integration step. As you can see, the printer has taken nice shape. It starts uh, to look like a nice delta printer already. Uh, there's a couple of bits and pieces missing, obviously, but that will be something for a later step. Let's see, next step would be the cold end and hot end. These are separate manuals, uh, I'll talk about them in separate videos as well. That's pretty much it for, for today, so I would say bye.